Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next EDW session called Meeting the Data-Related Challenges of Cloud Migration, which will be presented by Danny Sandwell, the Product Marketing Director at Irwin by Quest. All audience members are muted during these sessions, so please submit your questions in the Q&A window on the right-hand side of your screen, and our speaker will respond to as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. Please note that there are there is a linked form at the bottom of the page titled EDW Conference Session Survey. This is where you can submit session feedback, and we encourage you to do so. So let's begin our presentation now. Thank you and welcome, Danny. Hey, thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everyone, for taking the time to join us today. Uh, hopefully, this is a, a very relevant topic for you. I know we are finding that it is very relevant with all of our customers out there. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, there's a picture of me back in the days when we actually used to have face-to-face uh, -face contact. I guess I'm a little bit uh, just trying to reminisce. But uh, my whole career has been about uh, helping organizations get more out of their data, moving it from something that's the natural byproduct of running their business to something that's actually driving their business to, to greater value. So really unlocking the value of data assets and mitigating those data-related risks. For those of you not familiar with Irwin, uh, you know, we've grown from our, our uh, data modeling roots to put together a combination of, of technologies and solutions that will really help you harness your data, get the most out of it, and, and target it appropriately uh, for all the drivers that you have, whether it's digital transformation, regulatory compliance, uh, business continuity. Uh, whatever it is, uh, you can leverage our technology to bring the right people together with the right capabilities to get the most out of your data and, again, mitigate the risks that may be associated with using it in these new and wonderful ways. Um, we do have some pedigree, so uh, beyond our, our many years of leading the data modeling world, uh, we've turned that into a, a strong capability in metadata management, uh, data governance and data intelligence. Um, a couple of years ago, we debuted in the Magic Quadrant, and this year we were the only ones to uh, move up and across. Uh, so hopefully that's in the right direction. But uh, well-recognized and, and again, customers across all sorts of verticals uh, that are definitely feeling the benefits um, of leveraging our capabilities uh, to solve their problems. So, you know, uh, the, the topic is is migrating to the cloud. There's lots of different topics that we could talk about, but this one seems to be very, very uh, appropriate for this day and age. Uh, between the pandemic, uh, between you know the speed of business, uh, the competitive and dynamic world that we all do business in, uh, you know the the cloud is is becoming sort of not a when, but or or not a if, but a when. Uh, and with the advent of all these very rich cloud uh, data management platforms that are out there, organizations are moving from you know, specific applications like a Salesforce or something like that, and really putting their core capabilities in the cloud so they can get that performance, that scalability, uh, you know, a lower you know, total cost of ownership if it's done right. Uh, and, and really leverage these capabilities in a way that, that not just gets them to the answers that they need faster, but also uh, has a level of, of security and availability behind it uh, that, that organizations need in these strange and wonderful times in which we live. But what we find and what a lot of our customers are finding is that, you know, it's it's a great idea. And if you're you're starting with a green field, uh, moving to the cloud uh, seems like a, 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 you know, a natural thing. But if you have value and you have legacy and you have, you know, capabilities in your organization that you don't want to just throw away and restart from the beginning, uh, there's some real challenges to realizing these modernization benefits that the cloud can deliver. And breaking it down into two major categories, it's taking what they have today that is delivering value potentially in an on-premise uh, situation and getting it over into the cloud in a way that's effective, that's accurate, that doesn't take you know, far too much time and doesn't have a, a, a huge cost behind it to actually you know, sort of take away from the value that you're trying to get. And then of course, 
once that's out there, making sure that the data that's there is just as well governed and governed on day one, and is just as, as accessible and understandable uh, to all of the different stakeholders that you have in your organization, so that you can truly democratize your data and get the biggest benefit from that data by having all of these people and organizations uh, working together with, with real visibility control and, and enabling collaboration to get much more benefit from the data when it gets there. So, you know, I always like to start with this, this idea of what data intelligence is because data intelligence uh, is where you practice data governance. It's where you automate key elements of your, your data management uh, processes to make sure all of those things are in sync, they're all visible and they're all well understood. So if you think about the typical complex you know, world that we all live in from a data perspective, you know, represented in the lower left of all of these different technologies, all of these different regulations, all of these different use cases, all of these different uh, challenges uh, and making sense of it so that no matter who you are and how you're approaching data, whether you're an end user, whether you're a DBA or somewhere in between, uh, you can navigate that with full visibility, do that in, in a, a manner, in a context that's comfortable for you uh, and, and allow you to really be part of the solution. So we do that in data intelligence by harvesting your entire physical world, everything from your data sources, how data moves through that, the processes that integrates that data uh, right to the consumption endpoints. Uh, put that into a place where it can be curated with all sorts of important context and richer uh, metrics around how it relates to uh, your technology architecture as well as your business architecture. Ensure that you put the workflows in place and all of the information so that you know who's accountable, uh, who can help you with that data, uh, what rules and policies apply, uh, what type of, of uh, regulatory compliance it may be associated. And then taking that framework and activating it to get benefit out of it, to automate you know, key aspects that are very challenging, things like data lineage, things like impact analysis, things like uh, migrating from one platform to another, as we're gonna talk about today. And then through that entire process, have a, an access point, uh, a, a social media app, if you will, that socializes all of this information and allows people to uh, get into that, build communities, uh, have fun, uh, input their tribal knowledge for the betterment of all and really become much more effective in using data for their business. And getting more utility from your metadata is, is a key because every, the metadata is there, you're not paying for it, you have it. Uh, and, and it's really about putting it in the right situation uh, for it to do much more than it's doing for you today. So whether that's you know auto documenting and and it being able to connect in and bring that in in a meaningful way across uh, you know the entire data lifecycle, uh, whether it's helping uh, and driving you know greater curation uh, and associating things that aren't necessarily easy to associate out of the the gate, things like you know your different policies, your different rules, uh, sensitive data classification. And then enabling you to provide an environment where people can get on-demand things like end-to-end -end lineage from any point within that journey, uh, impact analysis, uh, you know, uh, graph type visualizations that allow you to navigate that through that intelligently, uh, and, and then really drill down through the, the use of things like dashboards into specific elements of the data to get rid of the noise. Uh, and then, you know, really get to the, the insights that you need. And of course, automating your pipelines, your workloads, uh, you know, and, and really, you know, auto generating uh, the changes that are going to come in this agile env uh, environment and make sure that you can orchestrate that platform without a huge, uh, you know, uptick in, in manual innovation, which again, drives up costs and reduces your speed and agility. So very, very important, especially in this topic looking forward. So as we look at moving to the cloud, um, you know, again, if you're a net new and you don't have a data warehouse, if you don't have a data lake, you're better off than most of us. But most organizations have a lot of value and a lot of investment uh, in those places. 
So they need a way to lift that and move it over into this new environment quickly, efficiently, effectively, and accurately. And we've put together a, a, a bunch of capabilities that exist uh, in our, across our technologies that will actually help you do that very thing. So, you know, whether it's converting the data structures that you may have in your in your data warehouse or in your you know uh, Hadoop uh, you know lake that's on premise, uh, and pointing them to these modern technologies, the Snowflakes, the Azure Synapse, all of those things, uh, helping you actually take the data and reload it into that environment quickly and efficiently. Uh, you may be taking the opportunity to transform data movement, you know, in order to uh, make sure that you have a, a richer base of data that hasn't been transformed until it gets to the point of a use case. Uh, and, and that way you have that data available for whatever use case, even if you haven't envisioned it today. Uh, and then realign those usage models that exist out in technologies that may be using things like cubes and that on premise and taking advantage of these new environments by realigning those usage models and then scripting all of that together to automate ongoing DevOps in these environments uh, with the real true benefit of having continuous data governance, not of just of what you've created on this new platform, but through the entire process so that you can actually have traceability, visibility, and auditability of how you got from point A to point B uh, built into the actual process of moving those things. So let's dig into it a little bit more. So it starts with the data model. Uh, I'm an old data modeler. I've been with everyone for many, many years. Uh, and, you know, the, the nature of our tool being a heterogeneous tool that, that supports all sorts of data, uh, data based platforms, whether it's your traditional Oracle SQL servers, uh, your MySQLs, out to your cloud databases like Snowflake, Azure, MariaDB, uh, NoSQL databases like Mongo and Couch, any of those things, we would give you the capability within our tool to reverse engineer what you have, take that model, leverage our capabilities to transform it, point it at this new technology, and then redeploy that out through our forward engineering capability. So, you know, lots of capabilities in the tool, not just to move the schema from one target to another, but to sp specify how you want data types to transform across that migration, making sure that you're maintaining your naming standards that you've created uh, to standardize your environment and leveraging all of that, that standardization and reuse that exists in the data modeling environment uh, that you're using every day to deploy new data, data sources out to the, to, to the business. So it starts with that. And then we, from there, you can then, move into the data intelligence capability, which is a combination of a data catalog and a data literacy suite uh, to quickly map what you have in one schema, in one environment uh, to the other. And the purpose of this is to, to you know, accelerate the, the reloading of data to this new, new environment. Uh, we don't come with a data movement engine, but we let you leverage whatever data movement engine you have and really you start to leverage our abstracted uh, you know, uh, mapping documents to quickly map those things, uh, automate the transformations, and then regenerate a, a job that can be quickly run out in your native ETL tools and, and push that data across, uh, leveraging all of the technologies that exist in that cloud data platform to make it as efficient and effective as possible. So, from there, once you've got that data loaded, uh, you really need to start thinking about, uh, you know, are the tools that I have in place uh, going to do the job? So are we just repointing existing, um, you know, data movement processes, or are we actually going to go and say leverage some of the, you know, modern capabilities, uh, you know, modern languages, modern scripting that exists on these platforms uh, again, so that you can do a better and more efficient job and have more of that, that core foundation of your data sitting on that platform for, for, for true effectiveness. So, you know, we have a, a complexity assessment that goes through and looks at what you have uh, it, from many different angles and slices and dices it so that you can see how complex is your environment, uh, how, how frequently do you use similar components, uh, what kind of design patterns do you have in those data movement processes? Uh, 
um, uh, how good a fit is this new technology for the capabilities that you have today and the capabilities that you want moving forward. And then we'll enable you to really provide a, a, a key timeline in terms of how much automation you can take advantage of, uh, what the, the sort of manual uh, you know, touch-ups and, and, and uh, interventions that will be required based on your situation and, and your architecture uh, to make sure that everybody is clear in terms of what you can achieve, when you can achieve it, and set their expectations uh, appropriately. Uh, so very, very powerful in, in understanding and automating the lion's share. And we've seen you know, benefits of 70, 80, and 90% of, of proposed timelines under a traditional approach uh, where we can do it that much faster uh, with a high degree of accuracy and, again, traceability throughout the entire process. And then... You move now, you've loaded the data, you've assessed, and, and you can make the choices. Am I just going to repoint my you know, uh, data movement and, and migrate those jobs to, to that new environment on the cloud? Or am I going to take full advantage of that where I'm actually going to convert uh, uh, my data movement technologies to take advantage of that? So again, we've re reversed engineered them into these you know uh, abstracted uh, logical mapping documents and we can point that through our technology to any uh, of the technologies whether it's legacy or uh, the newest and the greatest and latest that's out there uh, and recreate that architecture again with a high degree of accuracy uh, and integrity with very very little risk and letting you take advantage more quickly of all of those capabilities that you, you were looking for when you went to move to the cloud in the first place. But it doesn't just stop at data movement. Uh, you have a lot of technologies that have, are out there, you know, a lot of them leveraging things on premise like multi-dimensional cubes where you've got different technologies uh, that are preparing data for specific uses. Uh, but, you know, the cloud has has lots of capabilities and lots of efficiency built in, uh, but they are slightly different. So, again, using our smart connectors, we can reverse engineer what you have uh, in terms of business intelligence, reporting hubs, all of those different, uh, you know, technologies that are, are delivering information to the business. And we will show you how to convert, uh, again, with all sorts of integrity in an automated fashion. Uh, to a tabular format from these multi-dimensional multi cubes that are more appropriate and can leverage the power of the cloud uh, to give you the results that you want today, but also give you much more flexibility as you bring more use cases online, uh, leveraging things like, you know, uh, AI, ML, uh, you know, and, and all the good work that the data scientists that are, do are doing out there. So, you know, moving those attributes, measures, and relationships into an environment that's much more flexible, much more agile, and purpose-built for your future with data and how you want to leverage it moving forward. And once you're there, because you've done all of this in the data intelligence environment, uh, you've now got a clear view of what your as-is was, right, <laughs> if that makes sense, and what your to-be looks like. Uh, and it puts it into this environment where we can then start associating all of the important things to those technical assets, like business terminology that makes it easier to understand and makes people more literary, literate in terms of the data that you have. Applying the policies and procedures, uh, bringing along the tagging uh, for sensitive data. Uh, whether it's sensitive data by cate you know by category or uh, you know the specific regulatory schemes that you have in place or need to have in place uh, to make sure that you're in compliance, uh, not not at risk of of being fined or or even worse, become the next uh, poster boy for for bad data uh, through you know uh, a, a very public breach. Or, or you know, you know, impact on on the privacy of the of, of your customers' data. So you know, this goes right down to making sure as you transform your business and as you bring on these new capabilities, you're not at risk of having uh, your reputation uh, and your relationship with your customers uh, impacted by that. Because again, you only get one kick at the can. Uh, you, you know, 
the only the only companies that really get remembered around data in the news are the ones that, that had a, a bad situation and, and did it wrong. Um, you know, while you're in there, now you have lineage. Um, and again, you have lineage of what it used to look like and what it looks like today. Uh, within our solution, you know, this lineage is on demand from any point. So this is not something that you have to create and maintain. This is something that is presented to you based on the requests that you make. So, you know, lineage from where? Do you want forward? Do you want back? Uh, how much detail do you want? Uh, do you need to see the transformations? All of this can be, uh, you know, uh, filtered out so that you can get lineage views uh, for different people that have different needs. You can get rid of a lot of the noise and you can have a lot of rich information there on screen for them to see. So, so very, very powerful in terms of really understanding, especially for people that are used, used to using things in the old way uh, and now are in this new environment. You have to make sure that they have a high degree of trust in terms of the, the nature and pedigree of the data that you're delivering. Uh, and then you can do that on day one, because again, this is all a byproduct of what you've captured and that mechanism that you've used to automate this move uh, to this new capability and techno technology. You know, leveraging things like those dashboards uh, so that you can see the classification of data, making sure that that classification follows along the entire journey, leveraging things like impact and analysis and, and uh, uh, lineage to actually propagate those classifications so that you don't have to go to every step along the journey and make sure that you're doing things correctly and consistently. Let the tool do that for you and then give you a view into that. And again, this view can be for sensitive data in general. You can have a view that looks at you know, DPR or CCPA compliance. Uh, if you're in the healthcare world, you can drill down and provide views that are meaningful uh, to your line of business, to the world that you live in, and to the problems that you want to solve for your organization. So, you know, I know I've been kind of very quick in, in terms of, of moving you through, but this is an in perspective and it, it is a half an hour. Hopefully this kind of gave you a flavor of the types of things that you can do using data intelligence. In fact, the combination of this, we're calling something, we're calling it Cloud Catalyst. Uh, if you visit us at Irwin.com, you know, we'd love to have a conversation to see where you are on that journey, uh, what the challenges are that you're facing whether you're moving to the cloud, whether you're just trying to modernize uh, your, your on-prem architecture uh, with new capabilities and new solutions that, that give you more of what you need, we can help you in all of those environments, uh, no matter how hybrid uh, your environment is. So go out, take a look at Cloud Catalyst, please reach out to us and please come and visit us. We have a booth here uh, at EDW. Uh, with lots of people that are much smarter than me uh, that can drill you down into the details of how these things happen uh, and how we can really help you with your migration uh, challenges, your data governance challenges, and really create a, a, a richer data fabric in your organization uh, to meet the needs that you have today, tomorrow, and the day after that. With that, I think I may have left a couple of minutes for questions. So Shannon, if, if, if you want to fire at me, I'm happy to uh, oblige. Danny, thank you so much for this great presentation. And if you do have questions for Danny, feel free to submit them in the Q&A in the right hand side of your screen. I do see a question queued up here. How is source to target mapping done automatically? So we have a, a number of ways of doing it. So a lot of organizations have been doing source to target mapping. Uh, they've done it in, in many ways. I would say the most common way that I've seen it done is in that old, uh, you know, faithful standby, the Excel spreadsheet. So in our, uh, you know, in our data intelligence suite in the data catalog, we have a mapping manager and you really have a number of ways to create mappings. You can create them manually using the metadata that's in that underlying metadata repository. So it's a very easy, you know, drag and drop. Uh, there's lots of uh, sort of accelerators in that where it will, you know, do intelligent mapping for you. If you have mappings that you've invested in in spreadsheet, but you're not getting the utility out of them, they're tough to maintain. They're they're you know never uh, up to date 
and and it, you're always pointing people to the to the wrong mapping document, you can automatically import them using uh, our APIs in the technology and turn those spreadsheets into discrete mapping documents that you can then put under lifecycle control and start to manipulate moving forward. And then again, using our smart data connectors, uh, we can actually go into any technology that you have, uh, whether it's procedural code in the database, whether it's ETL tools uh, or, or business intelligence tools and reporting type tools and reverse engineer those mappings from the code and create again, these abstracted documents that you can then point uh, and forward engineer code from as well using smart connectors. Uh, and this is at the core of, of how you leverage that, that logical uh, data movement model uh, to really provide you the agility that you need to, to uh, modernize your data architecture and your data movement processes behind it. Well, Danny, that is all the questions I see coming in right now. Anything else you wanna add? No, uh, just uh, if you did notice, uh, we were acquired by Quest um, at, at the beginning of this calendar year uh, after a very successful year last year. Um, uh, so for those of you uh, that aren't familiar with Quest, uh, an excellent company that has a lot of, of capabilities from identity management, platform support, as well as deep capabilities around uh, the data. Uh, Data intelligence, data governance, and what Irwin brings to the table is very important for them. And we are, you should be seeing some pretty exciting uh, you know, notifications and, and press releases out in terms of what this, this marriage of Irwin and Quest is going to mean uh, for our customers uh, moving forward. You know, it's just going to accelerate our, our, our ability to deliver in this uh, domain and also provide you with linkage down into some of the natural places that would make sense to really make it even more power, uh, more powerful in terms of your ability to take advantage of that data. So please visit us, visit us at the uh, Irwin booth. Like I said, we've got people there that can answer all of your questions and, and just thank you so much for taking the time uh, to spend it with us. Enjoy the conference. Hey, Danny, we did have one quick question that popped up while you um, were chatting. I just want to sneak it in since we have a couple minutes left. Sure. Um, does Irwin Cloud Catalyst have capability to convert existing uh, third or star schema models to Data Vault 2.0 model? Absolutely, it does. Uh, thank you for reminding me of that. That's a, a, a very important one for us. We have uh, you know, Data Vault modeling in our data modeling uh, solution. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, but equally as important, we have a, a full capability to automate uh, your data vault uh, environment. So not just deploy and migrate the schema over, but put a, a full uh, orchestration capability around that data vault, because the whole purpose of data vault is to give you a much more agile data warehouse uh, that you can bring the changes in that are necessary uh, without having to, you know, basically lift the whole thing up and 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 change it every single time. So, uh, a lot of capability around Data Vault, both in terms of design, but also in full-on automation. Uh, so, you know, strongly uh, connected with uh, Mr. Linstead and all of those folks, and it, it's a big focus of what we do and and how we help our customers get to that that new data capability that they crave. And one last question here that we'll sneak in. What version of Erwin is required for cloud migration? Um, so in that Cloud Catalyst has a number of products in it. So, um, uh, you know, there's um, from a data modeler perspective, uh, you absolutely can do this with the existing uh, version today, which is uh, DM 2020 R2. Uh, and then uh, it's Erwin Data Intelligence 10.2. Both of those are coming out with more uh, rich features. And again, you sh should see some announcements over the next uh, month or so as, as well. But this is all uh, capable in the tools today and will be uh, even more capable with the next releases that we, come, uh, that we have going forward. Well, Danny, thank you so much for this great presentation. We just want to note again that there is a linked form at the bottom of the page titled EDW Conference Session Survey. This is where you can submit feedback from today's session. 
And that wraps us up. Uh, you are welcome to continue in, continue networking with other attendees within the Spot Me app as we take a quick break between sessions and get ready to start our keynote here in just a few minutes. We look forward to seeing you then. Danny, thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Have a great day, everybody.